Hey everybody, welcome back to HPC Tech Shorts, the engineering water cooler here in AWS. Uh, in September last year, while we were busy uh, deploying the latest version of Parallel Cluster 3 uh, and bringing that into the world, the Genomics Health AI team were actually, um, were actually busy building uh, and deploying a thing called the AWS Genomics CLI. Now, this is, a, this is a pretty mega utility that you download from GitHub and install on your, uh, on your cloud instance. And then it, you use it to actually proceed to run some of the most complicated workflows uh, that I've ever seen in, in scientific computing. Um, if, you're a, if you're a genomicist or a bioinformatician, you'll understand this. If you're not, then the practical aspect of this is that, that when you kick off these workflows, they can run thousands of tasks. Uh, mostly container driven. The whole genomics community has really done a very good job of focusing on containers. Um, and so this utility, uh, it's, it's a little bit unfair to call it a utility because it is such a big piece of code. Um, it's, it's able to run Cromwell, MiniWiddle, NextFlow, and then more recently Snakemake workflows. Uh, so quite a lot of different workflow engines and it actually builds and deploys all of those workflow engines on AWS infrastructure, configuring all the infrastructure for you. So all of those workflow engines actually back in quite happily to AWS Batch, which is our you know, really large scale container always on the scheduler in the cloud. Um, uh, and and they, they work very happily with Batch, but with the AWS Genomics CLI, you don't even know, have to know how to set all that stuff up. It does it for you. So uh, we're gonna, you know, we're we're happy to be joined today by Li Pang, who's a principal dev advocate from that team, uh, who built this. Uh, he's gonna take us through, you know, quite an interesting demo. And we're gonna jump straight into the deep end where Lee's gonna set up the environment and then start running some workflows for us. I hope you really get a lot out of this. Hi, thanks, Boof. Um, glad glad to be here. So uh, before we kind of uh, go into um, the discussion here i just want to kick off a couple of commands just to kind of run you through what it looks like to uh to start off using the uh, amazon genomics cli or agc so this first command here i'm just going to create a user id second i'm going to activate my account this was going to take a, a couple minutes or so okay and what's it doing what's it do, doing during this phase so what's it doing here what agc does is it has a, a bit of a couple of core requirements or a couple of core pieces of infrastructure that it uses um, with the way that I run this command right here, uh, it's uh, it's creating a, a VPC. It's going to create a, a, an S3 bucket um, and then a, a DynamoDB table. So these are just kind of the core things that AGC will use. You can provide your own VPC if you wanted to or your own S3 bucket. Uh, the DynamoDB table is where what AGC uses to to track all the things that it's doing in, uh, in your account. Uh, and the S3 bucket is... Um, is what AGC is going to use when it's when we're uh, when you get up and going with AGC to run genomics workflows. Uh, it is uh, it's going to put all of the intermediate and final results from uh, from your workflows uh, there into that bucket. Yeah, so this will take about uh, five minutes total. So it's uh, right right now. All right, so that's done. So what I'm going to do next is I've got a, a Git repo that I uh, put into code commit that has a, a quickie demo project that I prepared. So, um, so we'll just kind of change into there. AGC demo. Um, it's got a couple of things. Uh, it's got a project config file for uh, for AGC. It's and it's got a couple of folders full of workflows for uh, that are written in SnakeMake or SnakeMake, NextFlow, and Whittle. Um, and so before we kind of tool around in there, I'm just going to, this is the, this is the longest running piece right here. So this is, uh, deploying all of the contexts and we'll get into what a context is in, in a second. So this, this part here takes, uh, roughly 10 minutes. So what's it actually doing? What's the, at a high level, what's this, what's this sort of, um, deploying a context mean? So, um, so we did the activation stage. So this created a VPC, uh, created an S3 bucket, created a dive DB, DB table. These are the core things. Um, so this step right here, these are the this sets up the core things that AGC uses to operate in your account. And so this next step here, this um, 
deploy contexts, um, what this does is it is creating all of the things inside the VPC that are necessary to run a particular type of workflow. So you can have multiple contexts uh, within, uh, within a project, and each one of those contexts is associated with a different type of workflow language. So you can have one for Nextflow, you can have one for Snakemake and one for Whittle. Um, and they can all sit um, next to each other in the same project. So AGC uh, groups all of its activities and resources by project. Um, you could have your own research be in, say, Whittle, and you could uh, collaborate with someone who who likes Nextflow, and you can both like operate on the same data, but you use diff entirely different um, workflow languages. So okay, maybe I should ask the religious question of which one is the best language. Um, <laughs> they're all they're all very popular so i've heard um, um i've heard a number of customers about equal equal stakes in uh, in whittle and xflow and snake make so far so i've got another region all pre-baked here uh over in us east one um, martha, and martha stewart of the genomics world <laughs> exactly so why don't we go here and why don't we dig into that project config file so if i were to uh less the agc project yaml uh, it's simple. It's a it's just a YAML config file, and what I've got going on here is the it's the project name. Um, again, we use these to to tag all of your resources so you can keep track of of what's what. Uh, along with that user ID, I set as the first command when I was stuck, uh, kicking off AGC. Uh, and then in here, I've got um, a number of workflow definitions. So. Um, so I've got a couple of really simple ones. That we'll we'll kind of show what those look like in a second. So these are just your typical hello worlds for uh, written in Whittle. Um, one here for Snakemake. One for sorry, <laughs> Nextflow. One for Snakemake. Um, and then we've got some meatier things uh, also for Whittle, uh, Nextflow, and um, Snakemake. And then down here in this other section, uh, this is um, uh, data sources. So what you can specify here are uh, where where your workflow is going to pull data from. Um, I've got a number of uh, uh, publicly accessible buckets through our open data program. So things, some test data from the Broad, some references, uh, some uh, data from the Thousand Genomes uh, data set, uh, some reference genomes. And then uh, we have some demo data that's available uh, for just some of our example workflows that we ship with AGC. Um, and then down here, we've got... Um, the, our context definition. So here you can see I've got a Whittle context set up. So this is uh, a, a set of resources that will is set up to run Whittle workflows using the mini Whittle engine. Um, here's another one that's a little more complicated to uh, run Nextflow workflows. And in this case, you can see that I've, uh, I've uh, specifically pulled out a set of instance types that are allowed to, uh, to service those, those workflows. Um, so works with the uh, uh, workflow types for Nextflow, uses the Nextflow engine, um, and then one for, for Snakemate. So similar construction. Okay. Um, and then with all of these contexts, you can see that like you have the option to specify if you want to run them on spot or not. So if, you, if you're cost conscious, you can, you can turn that on and off. And all of the data is in S3. All of the instances can be, can be used in any AZ at all. This is how's it how's the how is the workflow engine going to make a choice about which AZ to run in or does it does it care? It doesn't. Um, so since we we use batch uh, AWS batch under the hood, right? Um, and what we do is we spin up um, batch computing environments uh, using best practices. So we spread out um, as we use as many subnets and AZs as possible. So that that gives you best access to you could even exploit spot market pretty easily that way as well. Exactly. All right, so, um, uh, but what we can do is, let's see, AGC uh, context status. We'll just see what uh, what contexts are running. So I've got the Whittle context, the, the Nextflow context, and the Snakemate context are all up and running here. Um, so what we can now do is let's take a look at what workflows are available. So it's a AGC workflow list. Um, these are all the workflows that are listed in our config file. So let's uh, let's run a couple of them. So let's see AGC workflow uh, run. And then we'll say against the Whittle context and then the hello Whittle workflow. And so what this will do is it submits the workflow um, to the resources uh, and uh, gets it running with AWS batch. 
um, for that context. And I can do the same thing for all the other ones as well. So I'm just going to drop a couple of commands here. So there's one for NextFlow. There's one for SnakeMake. All right. So I just submitted three workflows, three different engines. They're all running. I can check that with an ADC workflow status. You'll see um, a bunch of other stuff here because I've been running workflows all night long. Um, and so the three workflows I just submitted are up here at the top. And so they're all getting started and, and, and going to run. Um, mm -hmm. I've got a number that have uh, that I've been running over uh, overnight. Um, and uh, let's take a look at, say, this, this demo Whittle one, which is um, if I were to go back into the config file um, here, this is uh, this demo Whittle is a is part of um, GTK best practices. This is a step to convert a BAM file to an undap BAM prior mm -hmm. to uh, reworking it for variant calling. So um, what we can do is we can check on the the outputs for it. So we can say ADC uh, workflow output, and then we'll grab the the where is it this. The ID for it, uh, and then what it'll do is go and say, "Okay, this workflow ran. This is where all of the data that came out of it um, is landing." So here right. it is it's sitting in a couple of, in the S3 buckets for. Uh, for this this is where I should just say, "Bam, it's done." <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can come here to text <clears throat> for great humor like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> how did you when you ran those uh, when you ran those workflows a second ago? uh the three hello world work workflows if you had input data like input files where how do how do you how do you express where to get those where, how to, where to get that input data from uh so um what you can do is uh let's go in and take a look at one of these workflows so um let's go into so this whittle file this whittle workflow this more um how's it handled? You can see there's a couple of files associated here there's a main um kind of whittle workflow entry point uh, and then there's actually an inputs specification next to it. So, um, um, so this is this is uh, we we borrowed this from uh, from the Broad. Uh, if you want to learn more about these, there's a there's a whole repository of GTK best practices uh, mm. workflows that the Broad has out on GitHub. Um, but yeah, this is this is straight from them. Um, so this is running um, uh, one of their their workflows on AWS. Um, and that's a that's a common ask for uh, for a lot of our genomics customers. Like, how do I run GTK best practices on AWS? So let's talk about the inputs to this. So if we do less the the BAM inputs file, um, this is just what you'd normally say. Okay, I want this I want this workflow to process this BAM file. And so uh, with Whittle, you you give it a little an extra file that says. For this workflow, these are the say the functional parameters that I should run this workflow with. And so in this case, it's pointing to a BAM file in the GATK test data set uh, up on our open data program. How that all comes together is in this extra file here that AGC knows about, which is the manifest. Um, you can see that it's saying this is my main entry point workflow. You can if you have another one that you want to run instead, you can uh, adjust that. Um, and then this is this is where I'm supposed to be feeding inputs to, to this workflow. So this is so you actually did that with a remarkable degree of ease. Um, I've worked with customers before who've been trying to get uh, workflow engines working on AWS, and it is not easy, right? So there's a significant amount of undifferentiated heavy lifting that you guys have taken care of with AGC. Exactly, and and I, I that's kind of one of the things I wanted to point out. Um, I you saw me do a couple of commands here. I installed AGC and. Um, I uh, deployed some context, started running workflows, but I want, I, I think I, it's important to point out what I didn't do. And that is, mm. um, I, I didn't touch the AWS console. Um, there's a lot of good services in there, but I, I know that there's a, um, there's a few people that I've talked to that define like the, the breadth and depth, like amazing and overwhelming at the same time. Oh, um, the, the AWS console can look like a total perspective vortex for some people. And I understand yeah. why, right? It's just a lot there. I didn't have to. Uh, I didn't have to tweak or, or uh, grab a confirmation template or tweak it to customize my environment, um, and I didn't have to uh, install, configure, or tune an engine to run on AWS. This is all handled by AGC. So it's uh, in in a command line environment that should feel very familiar to to folks in the bioinformatics and genomics space. 
what we like to it what what's really cool here is that like you can go from effectively zero to science in in about 30 minutes uh with, with ag right and the 30 minutes most of that 30 minutes is actually waiting time while you're just waiting for a few things to get spun up some services mm -hmm. get get initiated and so forth there wasn't right. it wasn't like there was 30 minutes of sweat <clears throat> there was yeah. actually mostly 30 minutes of drink and coffee um <laughs> yeah or a beer, right. if you, if, whichever whichever time of the day you're you're trying this out. At. Uh, anybody who wants to find out more about this can obviously go to the to the genomic CLI landing page on our website, uh, and that address is here. If they want to actually just get started downloading the thing and skip the the marketing slides, uh, they can go to GitHub and get the CLI there. And it's an open source project, right? It is. It is, and we did that on purpose because um, we know that. Uh, the bioinformatics community uh, really uh, depends and is um, more engaged with open source projects, and so we wanted to to put this out there um, for them to uh, to really kind of dig into it and look at look at how it works. And we've gotten here with uh, you know a lot of experience over the past couple of years working with genomics customers, but we know that the bioinformatics space evolves very rapidly, um, and so knowing that having this as an open source project allows the that community to um, to play along, um, to, yeah. to, uh, help in evolving the product. All right. Well, Lee, thanks for coming along today. It's been really cool. Thank um, you. I learned My a lot. Pleasure. Uh, what I actually learned is that it's really simple. <laughs> now it's just the genomics bit that I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thanks for coming along today. Uh, to anybody else out there who's watching, uh, if you've got other things that you want to see us cover in a future tech short DM us, our DMs are open on Twitter. Uh, come find us, uh, come and stalk Lee and let him know what uh, what you would like us to to fix, do, or change in uh, in AGC in a future version. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll be back with another show next week. Thanks very much. Thanks, Lee. Thank you.